Hi guys and welcome back to the show. Today we continue building the mid-century modern inspired footstool and if you haven't seen the first video yet I'll post a link up here so let's not waste any more time and get right down to it. Where I left you guys last time you had seen me do my first ever lamination. I drew a triangle on top of the boards to make sure they were in the right order and uh, this is how it turned out. I left it for a couple of days, I don't know, but it was a little bit long, so the glue was really hard and a little bit difficult to scrape off. And you can also see that my dull saw blades are leaving some horrible marks on this rock hard oak. Luke, I am Nomad Makes. This and this will be laminated together to be the top. So this area here. These two will be laminated to be the sides, the front and back sides, and uh, these two here will be the right and left sides. And then the offcuts I got over here, I will make the legs from. So let's do it. I got these steel boards from an old IKEA desk. I'm going to use them to keep the boards flush when I do these laminations. I got this tip or inspiration from Matt at Badger Workshop and as always there will be a link to his channel in the video description. You guys have probably seen me do glue ups before but what I do is that I've repurposed the ketchup bottle to keep the glue in and that way I can just keep topping it up so I don't have any problems trying to shake out the glue from it and then I just squeeze, uh, squeeze it out like normally and I smear the glue out with a little piece of cardboard. What Matt did when he made panel clamps from steel bars was that he made or integrated some screws in them. But I'm just going to use the steel bars by themselves and uh, just clamp them down with clamps like you see here. There was a lot of glue ups and lamination in this little project, both large and small ones like this. Here I'm using some quick clamps to keep the boards flush. So despite popular belief, you can do glue ups without a Festool Domino or a biscuit jointer. But I guess it's a lot simpler. That being said, I'm just about ready to jump on that wagon. So I removed the clamps and got the boards ready for more preparation. This project actually took quite a lot of time. Not because the processes themselves were so time consuming, but I had a lot of glue ups to do. And I really don't have space or clamps enough to do many glue ups at a time. Using my miter saw, I cut the boards down to their final size. This blade really needed to be changed. It was, it was the one that came with the saw and it was starting to get really dull at this point. It's a little bit funny, but the video where I did the unboxing of this Metabo miter saw is my best performing ever video. I didn't really do a review of the saw there, I might do that in the future. It's a fanta fantastic little saw, but I gotta tell you, these rails there in the back, you really need a, like a hole into another dimension to fit the saw into a small workshop. But I made this mobile stand for it, and I also made like a video series on that, and it works quite well. I would like a, like a fixed miter station though. I decided to join the stool together using rebates. And here I'm screwing down a piece of an old IKEA shelf to use as an impromptu fence. And here I'm demonstrably throwing the power cord on top of the workbench so you guys can see that I don't touch the sharp bits of my tools without them being disconnected from the mains. You know, even if you can't see it in the videos. Anyway, I screwed the impromptu fence down and then I did some test cuts. This was my first time using my router like this and cutting across the grain I found that I got a bit of tear out. I tried doing really shallow 
passes. And I tried different methods. Here you can see I'm still having some tear out even though I'm taking really shallow passes. In the end the best solution I found was supporting the workpiece with an offcut. That both helped me to keep the workpiece squared with the fence and to prevent tear out. I may make some push sticks or push pads or something that has this function built into them at some later point. Then I could just go to town on all the work pieces and cut the rebates. I did this doing very shallow passes and only raising the router bit a little at a time. Here you can see the fit is quite good but I still need to cut the rebate deeper. And at this point I really needed to make the decision on which side of the boards I wanted facing out. It's funny what you can achieve, you know, using some old IKEA furniture. Man, the noises that router makes is actually a bit scary. Anyway, here you can see that even though the re rebate needs a little bit of a cleanup, the fit on the joints were quite good. I really like the way the contrasting wood turned out on those side pieces. I decided to do a test fit and uh, I'm going to glue this up using my strut clamps. This I just acquired and this is actually the first time I'm using them. I'm also using my Wolfcraft corner clamps. Uh, the corner clamps are quite handy, but this uh, thickness of wood is like exactly on the edge of what they can handle. So it's easier with wood that is planed more down than this. And if you haven't noticed it yet, Baby Vader is keeping a close eye on the process here. Then I could check for square and see that I was good for the real glue up. Then all I had to do was to get a good amount of glue into the joints. I guess the wood will be moving a little bit on this one. That will actually be quite interesting to see if the, if the stool will just fall apart because of wood movement. But we'll see about that in the future. So again, I used my Wolfcraft clamps to help keep the corners aligned. They really are quite handy these ones and they're not expensive at all.
and I could use my strap clamps or band clamps or whatever you want to call them in a glue up for the first time. I wiped up as much as I could of the glue squeeze out and spilled glue with a wet wipe. This is actually another tip I got from Matta Badger Workshop. And I did a final check for square with my fantastic woodpecker squares. I have to leave you with that for today guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please remember to leave a thumbs up and if this is your first visit to my channel please consider subscribing. You'll find a Patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. Cheers guys and I'll catch you in the next one.